my new voltage regulator <laughs> that I don't need. But I'm gonna keep it anyway. It's good good to have one of these. Um, I bought it online, and the reason I bought it is because I got the the Cub Cadet pretty much all done, and um, I didn't think it was charging the battery, so I, I put my voltmeter on it, and it's not. It was it was sitting at 12 volts. It wasn't it wasn't increasing when you um, when you rev the engine or anything like that. Um, so I polarized it like I polarized the red tractor, you know, this the same way, and uh, still just didn't work. I it didn't work. I went through the wiring. I double checked things. And I figured, okay, I, I checked the um, generator, and the generator was, you know, producing current. So it must be a bad voltage regulator, right? So I ordered a voltage regulator. Okay, here's the part number if you guys need it. It's a 12 volt voltage regulator. This one is for a Cup Cadet. Um, right there. Right, anyway, when I got the voltage regulator, it came with this piece of paper <clears throat> with kind of instructions. I went through and read them, figured I understood it already, but when I got to this part, I was like, wait a minute. You know, that's not how I polarize the other tractor. Basically, what it's saying is you want to jump power from the battery over to the armature um, on the generator. And then it says down here, um, do not touch the field terminal or the regulator is instantly ruined if that happens. Um, I thought, huh, that's, that's weird. Um, so then I was trying to, you know, I was trying to, I looked at the other one again, and um, so I, I went online and I started trying to research uh, uh, polarizing generators and, and voltage regulators and, um, and generators, and I found out something. Apparently, you don't polarize all tractors and all generators the same way. Um, apparently, all the generators there's you know there's different kinds of generators. Um, it all depends on the way they're designed. Some have three brushes, some have two brushes, um, and they're not all the same. So you basically you have to know what you have, and then once you figure out what you have you'll have um, a different a different circuit basically um, you have on here basically there's there's two different circuits that you're probably gonna have you're either gonna have an A circuit or a B circuit and what that means is basically um, this generator here on the A circuit was basically what uh, G, uh, GM used General Motors used in the 40s and 50s in their vehicles and they were different from these generators and this generator was primarily used in Fords in the 40s and 50s and of course Chevy and Ford they're always different and um, so internally these are different than this one now because they're different that means that you polarize them differently and the circuit is different um, They're both negative ground. But anyway, so here's the voltage regulator here on, the, on an A circuit. And if you look, you got the battery, you got the voltage regulator, you got the generator, and to polarize it while the whole system is connected, before you start it, you put a jumper wire across the battery and the armature. The armature of the generator should be marked with an A. Momentarily, it, it sparks, it sets it sets the poles inside the generator. Basically what you're doing when you're polarizing a generator is you're, you're matching the poles of the generator to match the poles of the battery. So that way you basically, you're, if you don't do that, you can have like a short. It's going to go right, it's going to go the opposite, positive to negative, basically. So it's going to act like a short. And if you don't polarize the generator, and you try running it without it, you can actually cause damage to the generator and you can cause damage to the voltage regulator and you can cause damage to the battery. It's going to burn up the voltage regulator, the points and the contacts, and it's going to overheat the uh, generator. It's going to, if you overheat the generator, you can melt the varnish on the coils and um, you could actually melt the solder that's, you know, soldered all the, you know, the coils and the armature and stuff. Um, 
know. So you have to do this. If you basically when you when you first if you take a generator apart and you replace the brushes in it, or you take the battery apart, you know, or out of the system you put a new battery in, you have to set the poles up to to match the battery again, and that's how you do. It. And that's the reason why you polarize a generator. Now in this setup, this is like my Gilson tractor. Um, this one you do differently because because it's a different generator. On on this circuit, this is a B circuit. What you do is you pull the you pull the wire off of the voltage regulator or off of here from the field. You take that wire off because again because again you do not want to touch the field terminal the, or the generator or the regulator is instantly ruined. Right? So you wanna pull that wire off of your field and then you just you you jumper or you touch the field terminal on the generator to the battery you know to the positive side of the battery when this is disconnected you disconnect the voltage regulator so that doesn't go back and um, you just do it for a second you get a spark it lines the poles in the generator to match the, the battery and um, and that's how you do that one and you know again the battery's got to be connected to the system when you do this and uh, and that's how you that's how you polarize you polarize um, a B circuit. Again, this is an A circuit, this is a B circuit. Okay? Um, just just to show you, here's the generator. I mean, I'm sorry, the voltage regulator. Right? You got, you got L, you got battery, and you got F. Then over here you got generator, G. Right? So the generator, that's your, that goes to the armature on the generator. The battery basically goes to the ammeter or the battery that's what's putting out the charge the load would go I forget to the to the ignition or something I forget and then there's the field um, this goes to the other terminal on the generator so what they're saying is you don't want to take power from the battery and touch this and the reason you want to do that is because if you look at the back of this thing you have a resistor there it's sort of like a fuse I guess but um, you can uh, you can probably blow that you know because that's going from the field term that's going to the chassis so that's grounded so so anyway there's another page here I can show you and it shows a little bit more detail about you know the uh, A and B circuits there's the A circuit there's a B circuit, there's your generator, and then right there's your field, and that's that resistor right there. So it's showing, it's going through that resistor to ground, and then the same on this one. So the field is basically completing the circuit, but you got to know what you what you got. So, so basically I was thinking, well, how do you know what you have, and how do you know which one you want to polarize it? And... Um, you can do it either way, just make sure that you're doing it correctly and, you know, polarize it this way first, you know, have it connected, jumper it, and, um, you know, start the engine, put your voltmeter on the battery, read it, it should go up over, should be about 13.5 to 14 volts, you know, charging, and then um, if it doesn't work, you know, try it this way, you know, disconnect that, you know, polarize it start it put your voltmeter on the battery and then watch it and it should it should go up the battery should sit about 12 volts or 12 and a half volts and then when you got your generator running it should push it up over 13 and a half i would say between 13 and a half and 14 volts is probably the range um you definitely that's the reason you have the voltage regulator and what the voltage regulator does is it it keeps the generator from overcharging the battery um or putting out too much current Basically, if this thing, if you run this generator without a voltage regulator, you'll overheat this because it'll it'll get it'll pump out so much current it'll get really hot, and it'll it'll melt the uh, varnish and it'll melt the solder joints and it'll go bad and it'll also um, overheat anything that's in that circuit because you'll be pushing too much amperage and it'll just melt it'll burn up things. So the purpose of the voltage regulator is to keep the current down so that it doesn't overheat things and keeps this from overworking.
So, so there you go. And also, what it also does is it disconnects the battery. So when you charge the battery, and then you know when it's not charging or it's it's sitting there, it disconnects the battery to keep it from draining. So it kind of does two purposes. This thing does a lot, considering it's just a box of wire with coils inside of it. Um, really, when you think about everything that the voltage regulator does, it's uh, it's a pretty complex little uh, component. But um, another thing they say too is never work on this, never pull this cover off with power connected to it, because you can actually short it out internally just by by uh, you know you know messing with things. You can you can short it out. So so just be careful with it. And uh, all right, guys.